monitor na. Okay na? Okay, so good morning po and uh, welcome to our second day of our Holy Week seminar. And um, I'm pr uh, I just I forgot to, to announce yesterday. If you have any questions, you can just write it down. So I send you lang po sa FB chat box or sa Zoom, so I can answer it clearly uh, later. So pwede ko naman po explain uh, further uh, during the question and answer session. So with that, we will be studying understanding spiritual gifts, tongues, prophecy, and healing because these are very controversial. Uh, gifts, medyo marami pong mga maling uh, understanding about this. I just want to clarify through the Word of God so how we can operate kasi marami pong natatakot to operate in these gifts. So para hindi sila confident. So after this, I pray that everyone will have the confidence to really exercise your gifts. Kasi sabi nga ng Panginoon sa Word of God, if you don't practice then it will ano, eventually be, ano, diminish. Hindi yan inaalis, madidiminish din yan. So at the same time, do not bury your talent. That is one uh, insight about that parable of the talent. Kasi nga, we are given gifts to four others. Kaya lang, pag hindi tayo gumagamit yan, para hindi tayo po nagiging effective sa body of Christ. Remember, everyone is a part of the body of Christ and we need to really be effective in really being an encourager to others. Today, we will study the in-depth insights on spiritual gifts, that is tongue, prophecy, and healing. We can only have this through the baptism in the Holy Spirit, an experience the apostles received 10 days later on the day of Pentecost. This is something that is totally separate from the new birth. The disciples had already received new birth from Christ when he breathed upon them several weeks earlier. Remember in John 20, 22. So when Jesus Christ breathed on them, they have this what you call the salvation experience. But then on the, on the book of uh, Luke, sabi nga niya, wait. So this is entirely different event than experience a believer. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is different. It is another experience and absolutely essential for our spiritual growth and perfection. It is an integral part of our redemption. Men in the Old Testament like Elijah and John the Baptist collapsed from the pressure because they did not have the strength in the inner man. This is what the one uh, part of the baptism is you have an inner part. Like me, no? if I'm not baptized, I will not be able to teach the whole day. What you're seeing in me, the strength that I have, it is the spirit of might. So I cannot have that unless I'm baptized. Kaya in the same way with you, entirely different po. Pagka, it is beyond human strength, human capacity, ability pag nababaptize po tayo. Now, in the same way, the pressure, especially in the ministry, you can really take it because of the Holy Spirit is uh, within us. Others like David and Samson could not rule their passions because of the lack of inner strength. This is one benefit then ng baptism is we, because we have inner strength to really control our passion. Remember, all of us has passion and we need to have self-control. Kaya nga, minsan, pag hindi ka baptized, you are prone to mas madali kang ma-fall. But if you're baptized, makita mo you that the Holy Spirit will tag you, okay? Parang pinaprompt ka, tinatag ka. That's the reason why, especially when you are baptized, I notice that uh, a lot of Christians, when they ha really are baptized, mas malakas na yung hila ng Spirit. Today, this power for inner strength is made available to us. Kaya nga, to those who are not yet baptized, then I am praying that you will be baptized today. So you will be empowered. You will be a different person. Diba? Now, it brings what else? It brings greater strength in the inner man to help us bear up under pressure. This is very important to all of us, especially in your position as leaders sa mga affiliations. Makikita mo na you can bear up the pressure kasi ang ministry is really difficult work especially when you're in the leadership position. 
It gives added power to overcome sin, okay? Habits and other bandages. That is a very good and a very great blessing to all of us. Helps conquer self-pity and persecution complexes because of joy and strength. So, pag tayo dumaharap sa mga pagsubok, nakikita natin, the joy of the Lord is being strengthened kasi because of the Holy Spirit within us. Then, what else? It sharpens our vision of what God is doing today. So, you have mostly vision, and then at the same time, makita natin na sensitive po tayo sa nangyayari sa paligid. So, make us more sensitive to spiritual matters and the spiritual realm. So, mas sensitive po tayo sa spiritual realm. Doon po, pagka napapractice natin the gift of discernment na, na, na enhance Gift of discernment, hindi naman yan na, uh, kasi minsan may mali po nga interpretation. Gift of in, uh, discernment is lahat na didiscern natin. The gift of discernment is you can really identify what is from God and what is from the Holy Spirit. Kasi pag hindi po tayo uh, baptized, medyo hindi po tayo sensitive sa spirit realm. Pagka ano ka, baptized ka, you can really be uh, be sensitive. no? Especially uh, in my uh, mission travel experience, uh, I could sense really the presence of the enemy pagdating ko sa isang lugar. And uh, I know how to handle, I know how to address the situation in the same way with you. Pagka nasa isang lugar ka, alam mo na kakaiba, na parang there's something uh, different, okay? Pero don't let, don't make everything spiritual, okay? Parang wag naman tayo medyo over. Kasi minsan merong may, may mga na-experience din ako na, naku, meron akong nararamdaman. Meron akong nakikita sa soup ko. Abay, kung gusto mong makita si Taning, makikita mo. Pero pag focus ka kay Lord, don't focus on the dark side. Okay? Kasi minsan yung iba parang out of yabang na lang ba? Para bang you just be quiet and just pray, okay? Opens our understanding of the scriptures. That is one thing that really helps me a lot when he opens my eyes to revelation. But it does not mean that when you have the, you have the Holy Spirit open palagi, it will take as long as you grow in your intimacy, the greater degree that you will have an understanding of the scriptures. Kaya nga, Hindi lang po understanding when you receive a revelation how much you are practicing what you have received. That will be the degree that you will have a greater uh, revelation. Pag hindi mo po napapractice yan, then the light will not grow. Helps us pray more effectively because in the Spirit, uh, when you pray in the Spirit, that the Lord will continually pour His revelation, His heart. When I pray in the Spirit, I get more specific specific will of God. Okay? Especially when I'm praying for others. Pag sinabi niya, hindi yan, Grace, hindi yan ang direction. Especially kasi when we, when we are, we have the Holy Spirit, even our prayers directed by the Holy Spirit, especially me, when marami po nag ng prayer sa akin, sometimes they will ask me prayers and then I will pray and then the Lord will give me grace. This is not my direction for that person. Sabi ko, Lord, what is your direction? So, Sini-share ko, I can share, okay? Pero min minsan naman, I cannot share openly pagka hindi ready yung tao. Kasi he, he, the person is very insistent to kung anong gusto niya mangyari sa buhay niya. So we cannot do anything about that. Gives greater power over Satan. So, your very presence uh, will really expel your uh, the, the enemy's uh, the, ano, presence. Remember, I shared it with you not uh, many times, but the very one obvious is when I went to Samwanga. Um, Sama tayo nun, Jill? Si, uh, Pastora Emma? We went to a place na doon kami matutulog eh, because the whole day, two days, nag-seminar ako, tapos one day, nag-speak ako, then from that place, we have to travel three hours just to get to another place kasi the following day, meron na naman pong seminar. So, imagine yung pagod ko talaga. So, sabi ko, Lord, pagdating namin sa bahay, I sense talaga the presence of the enemy was so very strong. Eh, wala na po akong lakas para, alam mo yun, na pag-pray and everything. Sabi ko, Lord, wala na akong lakas. Talagang pagod na ako. So, then in, in a matter of minutes, I, I sense the atmosphere change. 
Why? Because they left. So sabi ko, Lord, thank you. You know why? Because they sense the presence of God in my life. So they have to leave. So that's the beauty about when you have the power of uh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will really do it for you. Hindi palaging, ano, there are times then na, uh, I'm so tired, exhausted talaga ako, I cannot pray anymore. So, but the, the, the Lord will really guide me along the way. It enhances also the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. So, nakita natin, we can really, uh, we need to balance. There are nine gifts and nine uh, fruit. We need to really balance everything. Hindi ka pwedeng gifted na wala kang fruit. Hindi naman pwedeng fruit na wala kang gifts. Kasi you cannot really be effective in the body of Christ. Balance po yan. When you're growing in the fruit, the gifts should be enhanced. Hindi pwedeng ine-enhance lang natin ang gifts, pero wala tayong fruit. Kailangan sabay yan. And those us with nine gifts of the Spirit. So, pin-empower tayo for that gift. Brings many other blessings. So, marami ko na-discover also with this gift. Now, in Ephesians 4.11, sabi dyan, He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Okay. These are many three gifts. What Jesus gives. Okay? So, it's Jesus Christ lang nagbibigay dito. These are God-ordained. Being a pastor, it must be ordained by God. Not everyone is called to be a pastor. If you are an elder, you can be a pastor. If you're a pastor, you can be an elder. But being an elder does not mean you're a pastor. Okay? So entirely different. You can be an uh, apostle, prophet, and the teacher and evangelist. These are ministry gifts. These are not titles. Kaya nga ako, I always encourage people around me to call me Mama G because actually these are functions. They are not really titles eh. Kaya sabi ko, I just call me, especially when we're in public place, pag nasa mall tayo, especially tomorrow. So I, I prefer to be called by Mama G or Mom kasi they, these are the, the way they call me. So, at the same time, I'm not after title, I'm after relationship. Okay, para bang kasi may dig para bang boy, pastor, pastora, and all. So, among yourself, you can call yourself na lang by name or, you know, para, pero, alam mo, kasi minsan para bang ang haba, imbis na tawagin mo yung name mo, Grace. Pastora Grace, you know. Parang, I, I, I prefer to be called, kasi I'm your spiritual mom. So, I'm, this I'm addressing to, ano, ah, to the congregation. Baka yung mga naka-join, hindi kayo part ng CRCM. I'm not addressing this to you. But then, you can really still call me, especially may mga tao talaga, they call me nanay and mama. And sabi ko, okay lang sa akin, not really conscious of... Kasi actually, these are functions. They're not titles. But you see, parang hinahype na lang talaga na, oh, I'm a apostle, I'm a prophet, I'm a pastor, <laughs> I'm a teacher. Try kaya natin kung janitor tayo. Janitor, ano, oh, diba? Maganda bang pakinggan yun? Diba? So, you see, we, we put, ano eh, distinction eh. Pero parang sa akin, parang we are a family. I prefer to be called by that mother. Okay? So, apostles is one who is sent to another place. So, to do a task. So, there are three kinds of apostles. Like Jesus Christ, who was sent by the Father to this world, He did not begin His work until the Holy Spirit was sent to be with Him. Remember, He was baptized first, and then He received, uh, He received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then He was led to the wilderness. Okay, from then on, Jesus sent the apostles by twos, never Himself alone. Kaya nga, importante kayo po, pagkat merong pinagagawa sa inyo si Lord, don't leave the house alone. You need a partner, you need someone you will be be working. Hindi pwedeng nag-iisa kasi po, danger po yan. Kasi pag nag-iisa ka, at least may kasama ka, God will empower your companion to be discerning. E paano kung ikaw lang? Ako, I'm very... Um, Sharp po yung discernment ko, but I still present what I discern to my mga kasamahan ko. Why? I want the confirmation. Kasi I don't want to be, you know, iba, know it all. A ako, pagka na-discern ko yun, sasabihin ko, discern nga. Pakidiscern. Kasi 
especially when I, I can discern, you know, the kind of worship, the kind of praise, the kind of preaching, the, the kind of nagsasalita. Okay? Pag nakita ko na, ah, hindi to humuhugot from the spirit, humuhugot to from human spirit. I can discern that. So, now, pagka, kaya nga, in all my travels, I always bring Jill or Diane, yan yung mga kasama ko sa mission, yan si Pastora Mary and Eileen. Lagi, hindi ako pwedeng mag-isa. I can be alone in the uh, sa airport kasi nga magkikita na lang kami sa airport. But ministering, I cannot be alone because this is my protection. Sa prayer, kaya importante po din kayo na kayo po ay may part na don't ever go. God will provide you a, a someone, companion, okay? So, there are three kinds of apostle. Jesus is the chief apostle. The second is the 12 apostles sent as a witness to the resurrection. They have to be with Jesus to know him before he died and rose again to confirm that he is the same. That is why Judas Iscariot cannot be replaced by Paul because Paul never witnessed the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The third is Paul. He is the 13th apostle. A different kind of authority. Today, we have missionaries or apostles who will break territory for his kingdom. So, I operate in the four ministry gifts, apostleship, because when God sends me to places, okay, to advance the kingdom prophet, because God I give me a revelation, and sometimes I give a rebuke, a correction messages. Then I'm a pastor because I take care of the flock that God has given me, and then I'm a teacher. This is my the gift that I have. I love my gift as the teacher. Okay? Evangelist, I will operate on that. I don't operate much until, unless God really put me in a situation that I have to bring the message to the unbelievers. But really, I, I operate on that. Now, what is the difference now between uh, the gift, the ministry gift, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit? We can see that in 1 Corinthians 12, there are diversities of gifts. Iba-iba. Okay? It does not mean you have it all. But the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works in all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So lahat tayo may gift. Kaya wag nyo sabihin na wala kayong gift. Profit of all. The, the gifts are what the Holy Spirit gives. We receive it. This accompanied by signs like being filled or being baptized in the spirit. Once experience can now exercise. Pag na-experience nyo, exercise kaagad. Just like Jesus Christ, he received the Spirit after water baptized. This is the pattern except for Cornelius in the book of Acts. Do you notice? Nauna yung baptism of the Holy Spirit kaysa water. Why? Kasi skeptic si Peter about, you know, baptizing them. Kasi nga, Gentile to si Cornelius. Diba? Sabi nga ni na ni Lord, na kumain ka, sabi, I have not eaten, eh, ano, eh, yan mo yung food na bawal sa kanila. So, kaya sabi ni, ni God sa vision, eh, wag mong i-consider yung madumi na pinalinis ko na. Kaya, inuna ng Panginoon na si Cornelius ay mababtize ng what, uh, Holy Spirit. Hindi pa ako tapos. Because Peter was skeptic and will not baptize him and his household without seeing. So, that was the time. Kasi nga, Ang alam ng Jews, exclusive lang ang uh, Holy Spirit sa mga Jews. But then, the Lord, when He showed it, kaya nga nabab, pinababtize na niya right after. How does one know He has received the Holy Spirit? It is audible, visible, very evident to others, obvious, and definite. If we say that somebody has a real experience, it's from the Holy Spirit, then we become vulnerable to all kinds of deception. You cannot claim that every experience is from the Holy Spirit. Kahit pa sabihin mo na, it sounds good, it looks good, is it from God? What provides the deception is unbiblical theology. 
pag hindi yan galing sa Word of God na hindi mo nakikita yan sa sa Bible, then test mo yan, i-reject mo yan. Not every miracles come from God. Even miracles that do not guarantee that the man can be changed. Look at the Israelites. They have witnessed the power and the miracles of God and yet they have not grown in faith. So miracles have no guarantee na it can change a person. Kaya nga sabi ng Panginoon, mas gusto niya na we have a relationship and then the kingdom of God is in you. Huwag tayong takbo ng takbo sa experience at sa mga signs and wonders. Okay? Kaya nga hindi ako masyadong um, fascinated with signs and wonders. But I am amazed and in awe of God when He visits me. Kaya nga, the moment na merong manifestation, I can sense ka God. Okay? Kaya one time, when I pray, and then the, the Holy Spirit moved mightily in one of my um, conferences, merong mga tao doon na merong mga dalawang babae na nag-iiyak, naghihiyaw. So yung iba sabi niya, wow, ang galing ng move na Holy Spirit. Sabi ko, tumigil kayo, hindi Holy Spirit yan. Pat- patayinikin mo yan, patayuin mo yan, tumigil siya. So na, um, ano, sila, na-stand sila. Sabi niya, ma'am, kasi sigaw na sigaw eh. Okay? Alam mo, ang Holy Spirit, in order yan. Hindi yan show off. Pag naging emotional yung tao, syempre, blah, blah, blah. No. What provides that deception is unbiblical theology. We must understand how God works. Pag sanay kayo kung paano kumikilos ang Panginoon, ma-identify mo if it's human spirit, if it's Holy Spirit, or it's from the devil. Kaya usually, when I can identify a worship, I can identify the manifestation ng isang tao pag sinabi ko, human spirit to, hindi to kay Lord. I mean, I, re- I rather, you know, tolerate a human spirit than an evil spirit. We must understand how God works. Example, the word slain. Wala tayo, na-slain ako. <laughs> Uy, na-slain ka? Wow. We know that Ananias and Sapphira were slain by the Holy Spirit due to their deception and hypocrisy by falling on the floor. That is slain. But many ministers term that as falling on the ground as being slain in the Spirit. The Bible, okay, the Bible talks about falling on the ground due to the power of God. However, as soon as you use a phrase like slain in the spirit, you introduce non-biblical terminology. Every time we use unbiblical terminology, we introduce unbiblical theology. Falling on the ground is biblical. It happened to Ezekiel, John, Paul. It is human reaction, normal response to the presence of God. Studying biblical theology helps us to discern the experience. Kaya nga hindi po yan, pag sinabi mong fall on the ground because of the presence of God. But do not term it as slain kasi ang slain pinatay. Kaya pag sinabi niyo, Lord, I want to be slain, gusto mong mamatay? Slain used to Ananias and Sapphira because of their hypocrisy and deception. But if you are, you fall on the ground, you just say fall on the ground. If you accept the experience and, uh, you see, you have to study biblical theology helps us to discern the experience. Kaya nga, pag-aralan nyo ang Bible para alam nyo. Ano, um, Acts. Pagka sa Bible series na tayo sa Acts, I will expound on Acts para maintindihan natin, no? para maging safeguard tayo. If you accept the experience and give it an impressive label, you are vulnerable to deception. Self-deception is the worst deception. The danger is building a theology based on experience. Marami pong mga books based on experience, not based on the Word of God. 
Kaya maraming nadideceive. Minsan na uh, a friend of mine gave me kasi under the uh, the Bible uh, sa ano ba to sa Christian bookstore binili niya kasi she trusted that it is coming from a ano a Christian bookstore. So sabi niya bakit ganito to? Sabi niya parang hindi ako ano pakibasa. At the moment I open it sabi ko this is not from ano from God. Why? Because he wrote about his experience. You cannot base, you cannot share your experience to others. Share the word. I share my experience back up by the word. This is what I am experiencing through the word of God. This is my experience. Back up palagi yan. But if you continue to share the experience, and then without the confirmation of the word of God, you are sharing the experience. And they will go for experience instead of the word of God. Kaya importante, go for the word. Let them experience the word. So they will have their personal experience of the word of God. Kaya lang pa yung experience lang natin, yung mga experiences, experiences, delikado. Okay? Test it. I-test nyo. Apply scripture to it. Check if the spirit is operating in the way scripture show how God does. Remember yung uh, gold dust? Hype yun eh. Ilang years ago, hype yung wow, gold dust si Lord Diyos. If I don't see that, kasi you need to understand bakit may himala ang Diyos. May purpose yan. God will never contradict Himself or tell lies. The Spirit is consistent with scriptures all the time. Second, understand why it happens at what is the purpose why God is doing that. Hindi na porket may Himala. Wow! Meron yung gold dust. Bakit pinadala ni Lord yung gold dust? If I cannot get it understand, kasi nung tinanong ko, Lord, bakit ka nagpadala ng gold dust dito? At talaga yung mga tao nag-hype. Talagang na, na, uh, the church was really nag-multiply sila sa numbers and everything. Wow, every week talagang daming tao because of the gold dust. Asa na yung mga tao ngayon din? Mostly wala na rin. Bakit? They are not given the truth. Hinaip nila yung miracle, yung move. Every time we gather, importante ang word of God more than the signs and wonders. Because after signs and wonders, if the people are not fed with truth, magdi-diminish yung experience na yan, what do they have? Nothing. But when you give them the word, they have something to hold on. Bakit? Word of God is powerful. Kaya importante, word of God. Kaya nga ako, before anything, I'll give you the word. Huwag tayo maging hype because in the last days, the beast and the antichrist, many will be deceived. Kaya nga sabi ni Jesus Christ, di ba? Take heed that you should not be deceived. And sabi nga niya, di ba, sa Matthew 24, that even the elect will be deceived. Bakit? Hindi grounded sa word. Kasi when you have the word, the word will protect you, will preserve you. Third, communicate the truth that led to that experience. So the other person may experience the truth. Hindi kanina sinabi ko. Instead of trying to make somebody have the experience, communicate to them the truth that led them to experience. Yun yung kanina minention ko. Show them the truth. The Holy Spirit is given to us not for experience, but for equipping with power, not feelings. I can discern if one is operating in feelings or in spirit. Kaya lang, hindi ako kiki po. Kaya marami, pag experience ko sa mga travel ko, pag nakita ko na okay, feelings to. Don't operate in feelings. Iset aside yung feelings. It takes practice and maturity to control the feelings and then operate in the spirit. Discipline. We don't need to accept that every experience is of God. 
now. That's the intro. Go to the gift. <laughs> intro na pala yun. The gift of tongue. Okay? The Holy Spirit has not changed since the first century. The biblical way of being baptized in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and experience evidence by speaking with other tongues. So that is the evidence. Okay? Speaking in tongues is literally speaking in another language. These are not just sounds, noises, or gibberish. The apostles had tongues of fire and they were all speaking in many foreign languages. The new move baffles everyone. So parang nasyak. Di ba yung mga nasa paligid nila? Ano to? Some were amazed and others mocked. So it's a nor normal thing to do. Normal reaction ng mga tao. Every new move of God is like that. It is different from anything known in the past but draws the same reaction. Some stand in awe while others mock. So, hindi na po tayo masisyak pag tayo po ay minamock. Okay? What are the blessings of tongues? In Jude 1.20, sabi dyan sa Amplified Version, But you, beloved, build yourself up, founded on your most holy faith, make progress, rise like an edifice higher and higher, praying in the Holy Spirit. What does it do to us? It edify us. The only gift that will be used for us personal is the gift of tongue. Yan po para sa atin. Pag nangihina ko, pag nang, na, ano, I, I, I'm uh, confused, I pray in the Spirit. Pag masama po ang pakiramdam ko, I pray in the Spirit. Lumalaban po talaga ako by praying in the Spirit. The latest that I experienced was three hours talagang straight praying the Spirit because I was, psyched, I was being attacked by uh, physical affliction. Meron po ako parang kung something will happen to me, I can sense that, okay? So what I did, I, I stood up, naglakad po ako sa unit ko, pabalik-balik while praying the Spirit for three hours. I was battling. May warfare because the enemy wants really to put me down and I said no. That was the time yung um, uh, kasagsaga ng Omicron this January. Di ba? Ang mga symptoms like flu, sipon, ubo, and uh, basta. All those I have. And I said, you devil get your hands off me that I will not be afflicted with pestilence dahil yan ang promise ni Lord sa akin but he will not let go and then finally for three hours you know what sabi ko Lord di finally kinabukasan talagang magbaghapon akong nakahiga I'm so weak para talaga akong nakapag-gera sabi ko Lord what happened dati one hour lang tapos na gera bakit kagabi three hours sabi niya because the enemy is really testing if you are really up to it. Kasi minsan, uh, when you're praying in the Spirit, sometimes, di bang nakakapagod din? So, so, ang nangyayari, parang we will give up. Pero hindi pa tayo nagkaka-breakthrough. So, the enemy will have, you know, uh, mamaya, i-explain to him sa intercession. So, until hindi ako nagka-breakthrough, hindi ako huminto. So, it took me three hours. So, sabi niya, because the warfare is fierce. The battle is fierce. Okay? Because I want to have a testimony, and uh, the, the enemy does not want us to have testimony about the goodness of God. Now, there are three forms of tongue. Divine, human, Satan. Divine, inspired by the Holy Spirit, it is a real language. It edifies the person. So, Pinalalakas ka. Builds up when used. So, nabibuild up pag ginagamit mo yan. Strengthen the spirit. You see? Kaya kahit, alam mo, yung body mo bumibigay na, pero when your spirit is strong, lalaban ka eh. So, it's important that you practice that kahit, kahit, uh, you know, in my, misa kasi, I, I just pray in the spirit eh. Tapos,
Tapos, I just, ano, the Lord will speak to me. Practice it. Practice it because it is true that God would speak to us. Ako, ito po kasi yung pattern sa akin, ano, na exercise ko. When I am praying, okay, when I'm praying the Spirit, sometimes binubuhos ni Lord, Grace, ito yung topic mo. Hindi ko man alam yun eh. Kasi nung sinabi lang yun sa akin, you will have a seminar. Ano ito? Turo ko, Lord. That's it. I pray in the Spirit until I make a clear revelation na ito ang theme mo, ito ang ano. This one, six. Diba? I got it from praying in the Spirit. Sabi niya, six. Pumapasok, six, six, six. Okay? So sabi ko, yes, Lord, I'm seeking you. I'm seeking you. Sabi niya, no, no, no. You'll explain niya sa akin. That is strengthening. Uh, establishing, equipping for His kingdom. So, doon niya binibigay sa akin, especially the topic, kung ano yung mga topic na ibibigay ko. Lord, ano yun? So, general muna yan. Then, magiging specific na yan. Kaya, hindi madali mag-construct ng lesson, especially this seminar, kasi may Sunday pa ako. Pag nabinasa ko ang Bible series natin, nagbabasa ako, di ba, yung book. Hindi lang enough yan, kasi... There are times when I pray in the Spirit, the Lord said, ito yung revelation na yan, ito. Kasi hindi siya tataro, ah, ano nangyari dito, Lord? Bakit ganito? So, you, you see, it, it, uh, kailangan meron din kayong ano. That's how you communicate with God. So, use that. Parang pag nakoconfuse ka, di mo wala kang nakukuha ng direction, God will really speak through the Spirit. Okay? So, importante po yan. Okay. So many times, the Lord will speak to me. Na sabi ko, Lord, what is your will regarding this? This is me, ah. I don't know how God will, hello, speak to you. Sometimes the very first word that will come up to mind ko, okay. Nyan, I got it. Kasi si Lord, many times He would reveal, ano, piece by piece. Hindi yam buo, piece by piece. So susulat ko yan, susulat ko yan. Kaya may importante, may journal kayo. Para peace, peace, sulat, sulat. Tapos finally, pagka nabuo, ah, okay. So, alam ko na. You see? That's, that's it. This at first. But sometimes, okay, uh, 2002, when God called me, na-baptize na ako ng way back, eh, 90s, okay? So, 2001, He called me. 2002, may experience ako. Okay? That uh, the spirit was parang may gumagalaw dito. So, ano yun? So, sabi niya, Grace, my spirit is uh, uh, tawag nito. Basta, meron siyang uh, tinuturo sa akin. Okay? So, I cannot share that kasi personal yan. Okay. Hindi lahat po ng experience natin will be like, oy, kailangan. Kasi depende yung po sa intimacy. Okay? So, may may experience ako. I cannot share. There are so many experiences in my life na hindi ko pwedeng ma-share sa'yo because based on my intimacy with God. Kaya nga, minsan, pagka siguro yung mga revelation na sinasabi ko sa inyo, that is just three-fourths of what I'm sharing. May one-third po na hindi ko ma-share because it's too personal, too intimate with God. Kaya, meron mga pagkakataon na yun, why am I confident that it is from God? Because of my relationship with God. Ngayon, kung wala pa kayong relationship at may experience kayo, kailang back up kayo ng someone na, o yung nga kay Lord yan. Kasi danger nga yung experience kasi the enemy will try to exploit us. Kaya importante na talagang establish po tayo sa relationship with God. So if it edifies me, kaya nga importante na when I am really uh, uh, constructing a message, hindi po madali, okay? It will take time because if the Spirit wants me to do this, especially pagka, pagka may direction, minsan may nagsabi sa akin na, oh, bakit wala tayong communion? Hindi nililid ako ni Lord ng communion. So, hindi kasi ako nasanay na kung ano yung pattern ng majority of the churches, kailangan ito gawin, kailangan ganito yun. So, I don't do that. Pag sinabi ni Lord, oh, sige Grace, you will have a communion, I will have a communion. Pag sinabi niya, no, you focus on focus on the words. So, focus ako sa words every Sunday. Kaya nga, masyado ako sa words, di ba? So, ang second uh, uh, form is human spirit. Purely of the flesh. Of the flesh. Not real language. It's bubbling. 
it does not do any harm nor good to the person. Kaya nga yung human spirit, I can discern in preaching, in worshiping, if it's human. Pag human, nadidiscern ko na yan. It's more of emotion. Kaya minsan pag may nagsishare sa akin na ito, pastora, ganito lang yung share. Yun ang ano eh, yun yung beauty about when you are really, uh, you are sharpening your discernment. Minsan, hindi ko nakikita yung tao na didiscern ko ako yung dinadaanan niya. Anong problema niya? I do that. Kaya minsan magsicheck ako, may problema kayo, no? May nakukonfirm. Minsan nakikita ko, ang problema pa. Why? Vision. So, the degree of your position in the ministry, the degree of your authority, the degree of your uh, intimacy will be the degree that God will entrust you with whatever He wants to entrust you. Like, wow! When God shows something in me that is so private about that person, ini-entrust niya ako about it. Hindi yan para isisis, para ipag-pray yan. And I will discuss it with my intimate uh, associate, like uh, Pastor Will. Will, ito may problema sa kanya. Kanya lang palagi, Will, ito problema. So, we discuss it. Okay? So, kaya kayo, huwag niyong sabihin na meron kayong nalaman sa tao at sinabi ng Holy Spirit. Dahil madalas, ginagamit din kayo ng kaaway para siraan ng tao. Ngayon, anong reaction nyo? Yan ang problema sa ministry. Kaya minsan, sasabihin nyo, sabi ni Lord, ganito problema. God will not reveal to you if you have no authority and you have not been entrusted. Remember that. Kaya pag may sinabi sa akin, sinare sa akin, at hindi nag-confirm, it's just purely human, okay, I will take it into consideration. Hindi ko naman i-reject. Okay? Kaya, madalas, pag may nire-reveal sa akin, dinidiscern ko, dinibigay ko sa intercessors, pakipray to, kasi may nadidiscern ako. Yan. Pag na-confirm, okay, confirm. So, human, purely of the flesh. Okay? Naka-encounter naka na ba kayo ng ano? Tongues in human? Pinipilit nila. Kasi pag Holy Spirit ang harabas siya, naraban natural yan. Naraban siya, natural. Sige, relax. Harabas siya, naraban siya, naraban siya, naraban siya. Kaya minsan, when, during preaching, I am still praying. Okay? Magka, sabi ko, Lord, I can sense. Kaya, I can sense if I, a uh, attendee has a different spirit. Kaya lagi ko sinasabi, huwag nang pabalikin yung taong na yan. Hindi ko, I don't like the spirit. I can discern that. Kasi yan ay from the darkness. Okay? The, the tongue from the flesh will do not do any harm or good to the person. And danger is it from Satan, from the devil. It has a damaging effect on the spirit of the person. Okay, one time I, uh, I had an experience in Davao, I believe in Davao. So, may nag-approach sa akin after preaching. Sabi niya, Pastora, baptize po ako. Pero ang problema niya, bakit pag nagtatangs daw siya, yung mga kasama niya kinikilabutan? So, sabi ko, sige. So, isang tabi ko siya, magtangs ka. Eh, nung nagtangs siya, sabi ko, Saan mo nakuha yan? So sabi niya, ah, nilayhan po ako nung ano, minister, tapos nag, nababtize po ako. Hindi kay Lord yan. Sabi kong ganun. Bakit mo tinanggap? Kasi hindi niya alam. So, sabi ko, sige, alisin natin, deliverance, and then pinag-pray ko, and then finally, you see, 
teacher full kung sino yung naglelay hands sa inyo. Huwag kayong palay hands ng palay hands dahil lang medyo eloquent yung speaker. Tignan nyo. Meron bang fruit yan? Interviewin nyo yung mga kakakilala doon. Okay? Kasi lay your hands, you're imparting the spirit of the person. Kaya pag kayo na lay hands, that's why I really hurt lay hands. Pag sinabi ni Lord, don't lay hands. Kaya maraming tatanong bakit sa mga, you know, mga preaching, nung hindi pa lockdown, hindi ako nagpapa-altar call. I'm not being led to have an altar call. Unless the Lord spoke to me, magpa-altar call ko, papa-altar call ako. I, heart, I rarely help is lay hands. Kasi minsan, pag nag, so one time experience ko, nilay hands ko, napa-atras ako. Sabi ko, grabe spirit nito. You see, when you're sensitive, alam mo pa agad eh. Kaya lang nakakaawa, yung yung walang alam. Paano kayo? Kaya nga, you need to be in the Word. Kasi the moment, because when God, the Holy Spirit has something to what we draw, ano, i-ano niya, i-pull up niya. You see why? Because of the Word. Imagine, nagtatang siya, pero every time nagtatang siya, nakinikilabutan. Yung iba naman, kinikilabutan ako. Ganun pala Holy Spirit. Huh? Kinilabutan ka ba? Porket kinilabutan ka eh, Holy Spirit na? Eh, ano natin? Okay, kilabutan tayo. Pag nag-gather kami, kinikilabutan kami. Dahil pure ang Spirit. Si Lord John. Pero kung nag-gather at iba-iba galing sa church at di mo kilala, kinikilabutan ka eh, magtanong ka na. Okay? Hindi yung tanggap lang kayo ng tanggap na kinikilabutan ako. Bakit? Ano ba yan? Saan galing yan? Pero pag tayo, like me, we, we gather together, okay? Just like yesterday, I asked for the intercessors. We really feel something na, wow, we really feel the presence of God. I am secured kasi pure. Pero when I'm with people na I do not know, I observe. Yung iba naman, wow, kinikilabutan ako. Sabi ko, okay. Pero alam ko na, hindi kay Lord John. Pero sila, fascinated na. Bakit? They're, they don't have a relationship with God in their church. They have what? Religion. They have what? Theology. And yet, no experience. Kaya ingat po. Okay? Kaya nga, There are times, pagka kahit baptized na sa Holy Spirit, meron at merong gagawin ng kaaway. Okay. Minsan, nagpipray ako, sabi ko, Lord, parang kakaiba tong tanks niya. Bakit? Wounded eh. May bitterness. So, ine-exploit ng kaaway yan. Di ba sabi nga, do not give the enemy any place. So, bitterness, kasi prior to that verse, sabi niya, do not be bitter. Let go of the bitterness and forgiveness. Do not give the enemy any place. Bakit? Because you open your life to the enemy if you have bitterness and then you pray in the Spirit. Kala mo, Holy Spirit. Kaya yung mga kasamaan mo, kahit hindi sila discerning, tinatanggap nila. Kaya nga, make sure. Make sure that every time you pray in the Spirit, Lord, cleanse me. If there's any bitterness, is there any unforgiveness, cleanse me. I release forgiveness to this person, to that, and then wash me by your blood. Then what happened? Now you can pray in the Spirit. You're cleansed now. Now we go to the gift of prophecy. Prophecy is revelation. It is something you receive that you have no way of knowing. Anyone can hear from God, but we don't usually perceive it. I Sometimes, alam mo yun, yung minsan pupunta ka ng mall, nadidiscern mo yung tao na hurting. Yung e, ganun, minsan may ganun ka eh, di ba? So God wants to minister to these people. God created us with different purpose, with different gifts. We are one body but many parts. Revelatory gift is an ability to receive simple revelation from God. Everyone has this capacity. A simple, ano, a simple revelation. Okay. 
para po tayong ano yan eh. Para tayong satellite dish. Dish. Alam niyo po yun. Okay. Tumatanggap tayo ng revelation. Everyone, pag you have the Holy Spirit, you have that. Many people, when they think of prophetic gift, they think of prophet of old. That is a stereotype. But the Bible has a broader view about the gift. What is the difference between ministry gift of prophecy and spiritual gift of prophecy? So, bakit may kakaiba merong mga categories? This shows that there is a different level of gift. You may not be called the prophet, but you can receive a revelation from God. Kasi akala niyo natin na, ay wala, well, di naman ako propeta eh, kaya hindi ako makareceive ng revelation. Mga kapatid, ano sabi ni ano, Jesus Christ? My sheep hear my voice. So, sheep niya tayo, kung wala kang ano, prophetic gift, that's not mean, hindi ka makakarinig. Kasi sabi niya, my sheep hear my voice. Okay? So, we should not stigmatize meaning we should not demand more from the gift than what God is giving. So, wag din tayo maging, you know, maging over. There are levels of prophetic ministry that distinguish the different levels or measures of prophetically gifted people. A simple prophecy is given when any believer speaks an impression that God has brought to his or her mind. We are all to earnestly seek to prophesy. That is the encouragement of Paul, diba? That I, I know that everyone must prophesy, okay? So makita natin yan sa 1 Corinthians 14. All men and women, old and young alike, are to speak forth words from God. So dyan po makita natin sa Acts, yet not all are prophets. Okay? Simple prophecy is usually within the scope of encouragement. Okay. Kainig, listen. Ang simple prophecy is to encourage. Wala kayong, you don't go beyond that. Simple prophecy. Courage. Don't rebuke, don't correct. Wala kayong authority. Okay. Then, comfort and exhortation that is explained in 1 Corinthians 14.3. Para bang, ini-encourage mo lang siya. Kino-comfort mo siya. You know, sabi ni Lord, ito eh. Okay. And it does not include correction new direction, or predictive elements of prophetic words. So, pagka meron nagsabi sa iyo, okay, minsan na-experience ko yan. Sabi, may nagsabi sa akin, oye, pastora, sabi ng ni Lord, ganito, ganyan. Hindi na confirm sa spirit ko. So, hindi ko naman i-insultuhin, pero I bring it to prayer. Lord, hindi po, ano, hindi nag-confirm. Ano to? Sabi niya, it's not from me. Discard. Then one time, I had an experience with a prophet. Prophet talaga. Grabe. Eh, medyo mayabang. Gusto daw ako mamit. Sige, hit tayo. Punta ako sa place nila. Sama kay friend ko. Sabi nung assistant. Pag nakita kayo niyan, para kayong na-inextray niya, alam niya kagad from head to foot kung ano ka at anong future mo. Wow! Sabi ko, galit. Sabi ko, galit. E, ganun ba? Sabi ko, sige. Nag-pray ako. Sabi ko, Lord, hide me. Di, pinapasok na ako sa office. Pag-upo ko, tahimik siya. Tingin lang siya ng tingin. 15 minutes, wala pa rin siya sinasabi. Sabi niya, I'm having a hard time Seeing about you. Sabi ko, what? What do you discern? Sabi, I'm having a hard time. Maybe something is wrong with you. Oh, sabi ko. Okay? So, what's wrong with me? Because I was informed that uh, you can really, you know, know everything about a person the moment you, you met that person. Sabi niya, yeah. But, sabi niya, I'm amazed. I cannot see anything. Sabi niya, ganon. Okay, okay, sabi ko gano'n. So, then finally, sabi niya, but this is God, ano, I will say a prophecy upon your life. Okay. 
Pero nung nagpo-prophesy sa kay, sa ako sa kay, uh, pinoprophesy siya sa akin, sabi ko, I reject that, I reject that, I reject that. Bakit maraming Christians fascinated sa prophecy? Para kayong manghuhula. Kasi sa, meron na experience sa Davao, di ba, one time, meron na mga nakakilala doon. Meron silang guest na prophet, pinilahan. Anong prophecy mo sa akin? Pinilahan, tapos charge 500. Ano yan, manghuhula? Remember, prophecy are not scriptural. Mas grounded ako sa word kaysa prophecy. Dahil ang word, sigurado yun, dahil si Lord nagsasalita nun. Pero yung tao sa akin, magsasalita, wala akong guarantee doon. Okay. Bakit ngayon, maraming fascinated sa prophet? Uy, prophet, darating! Ano, magpapaprophesy ako, papaano pa eh, papalihan ko pa eh. One time we attended the conference, I, I remember I was with... Uh, Willie, and yung dalawa na wala na. Tapos with Diane, and with another worker. So remember doon sa Makati tayo? So, ano, nag, ano siya, prophesy siya, pero nagpo-prophesy siya, umiikot yung kanyang ulo, bilis. Sabi ko, nakakahilo yun ah. Ganun, ganun siya oh. Ganun yung ulo niya. Sabi ko, layas na tayo rito. <laughs> so, You see? Pero mga tao, nag-flock sa harapan, nakikipag-unahan, sino magpo-prophesy? Sabi ko, no way. I'm not gonna let this person prophesy over my life. That's not even the Holy Spirit. You see? When you have the Holy Spirit, it will protect you. Kaya, a simple revelation, these are often simple impressions that God brings to mind. These include words of knowledge, specific information regarding physical spiritual or emotional status of someone. Example, may humingi ng prayer sa akin about healing. So, nung ipagpe-pray ko siya ng healing, ano nangyari? Sabi ni Lord, don't pray for healing. May, ano yan, uh, kasi uh, nagbe-bleeding siya. So, sabi ni Lord sa akin, pray that she will release forgiveness. So, sabi ko, sister, may galit ka ba? May unforgiveness ka ba? Tapos she broke down. So sabi niya, opo. Then, finally, uh, saya-saya niya, after my prayer, nirelease niya ng forgiveness, nag-stop yung bleeding. Then, the following uh, con- ano, day ng conference, sabi niya, Pastora, bakit po hindi agad-agad yung healing? Sabi ko, kasi hindi mo fully pa release But you're on your way. Okay, sabi niya, as you continue to release everything, then ma, ano mo yan, makukuha mo yan. Sabi niya, okay po. So, you see, yung, yung uh, word of knowledge is very important. Kasi, hindi mo alam kung anong case niya eh. Diba? Parang hindi ka pwede, mamaya sa healing, hindi pwede lahat na humihingi ng healing. Katulad ng minsan, humihingi ako ng healing for someone. Sabi niya, great no. Tapos magsasabi tayo, he will be healed. It will be a devastating to a person kasi, alam mo yun. So, importante po will be sensitive. Misan kasi parang, alam mo yun, misan yabang na, oh, the Lord will heal you. Wala ka namang narinig. Diba? Occasionally, this includes receiving vision, mental pictures or dreams. The, ber- the person giving the prophecy speaks mostly using his own words. An idea that God brought to mind. Okay? So, pag may vision, may dreams, importante yun. Revelation can be vision. Dreams, picture, which needs interpretation. Having this gift, you are an eye of the body. That's why you cannot function outside of the body. This is very important po, okay, na you belong to a body of Christ. Kasi pag wala po kayong church, you are prone to deception, And you are prone na hindi po kayo ma-establish sa vision at calling ng church. Anong calling nyo? Eh, the call, your calling and your purpose in life will be what? Equipped and will be guided within the church. Pag wala po tayo, we don't belong to a church, paano yung calling nyo? Hindi nyo na-express, wala din, uh, wala din protection dyan. That's why you need to have a church. Okay? 
kailangan po. Kaya nga pag sinasabi ko, what church do you belong to? Kasi every church has a calling. Okay? Kaya nga sabi ni, di ba sa Ephesians, that uh, God manifests His ano, diverse wisdom through the church. Ibig sabihin, there is a church that is prophetic, apostolic, teaching, pastoral, evangelist. So, doon nagpo-function yun. But within the church, kailangan present an apostle, prophet, teacher, pastor, and evangelist. Kaya nga masaya ako na kompleto kami because we have an evangelist through Pastora Mary. Pero the rest, may prophetic, may apostolic, merong teacher. Okay? Ang prominent ng gift ko is being a teacher. But when God sends me to the mission, this is where I function as apostolic because I'm just being sent one. Then my message is prophetic because it corrects, it gives direction to the body of Christ. So having this gift, you are an eye of the body. Kaya importante, anong part ka ng body? Kung wala ka, if you don't belong to the church, ano ka? Singaw? Umusbong ka lang? You are not attached to anybody and you're functioning in your gift? So ano yun? Di ba? Para bang ano? Para kang, yeah, singaw. A small voice or a verse for another person is another form of prophecy. This serves as an ear. This gift can be stirred up by those who have the gift like what King Saul experienced. Prophetic gifting believers who regularly receive impressions, dreams, visions, or other types of revelation have prophetic gifting. This can often be symbolic being in the form of parables and riddles. This group receives more regular prophetic information than the first group yet lacks clarity in understanding what they receive. Kaya nga body of Christ, hindi ko naintindihan. Ano ba ibig sabihin nito na, na nakakita ko? Okay? May nakita ko dito sa life mo. Spirit of prophecy, this allows everyone to prophesy while the ministry of the prophet has a higher level of clarity authority, and accuracy. Prophetic office is someone like the prophets of the Old Testament occupy the office of the prophet. They give correction, direction, and bring new emphasis in the church body. They provide direction and correction to those in government in the church, marketplace, or political arenas. They often minister in signs and wonders and are known regularly speak very accurate words from God as Samuel did. There are really no clear-cut standards for deciding if a person is level 1, 2, or 3 or exactly what the dis distinctions are. These are not biblical distinctions. They are simply categories that help us communicate with each other more effectively. It may become apparent that more levels are necessary, but I believe, we believe, that the initial groupings will provide some framework for future study. Operating at a high level of supernatural activity also exposes those so gifted to a greater intensity of satanic assault, meaning the greater degree you're exposed to supernatural, mas malaki po ang pagkakataon na pwede po tayong ma-attack at madaya ng kaaway. Importante po kaya po nasa loob tayo ng church to guide us, to really lead us, and to test the spirit. Okay? An ethical compromise can leave them unprotected targets in very dangerous realm. Prophets need greater godliness, wisdom, faith, and nearness to Jesus to withstand the added attack of the enemy that comes because of their gifting. Remember, di ba like ang sinasabi sa iyo, pray for me. Why? Grabe po. Because of the revelation. Okay. Prophet has a godly character. Number one yan. Pure ang life niyan. 
Hindi yan worldly. Kaya, it's not, I don't speak also for this, ano, ano, gift. All of us must not be worldly. Okay. Which is an essential mark of a true prophet. Jesus said that you would know true and false prophets by their fruit. The fruit Jesus refers to includes the impact of their ministry as well as the fruit of the Holy Spirit sanctifying work operating in their character. So makita mo, ano yung impact ng ministry? And then how the Holy Spirit is sanctifying the person. True prophets consistently seek to walk in holiness with deep passion for Jesus. Prophet has the matured wisdom of God that has come through experience and relationship with the Holy Spirit. This wisdom enables the person to be an instrument of the prophetic knowledge and power of God in a way that builds up the people of God and the purpose of God. This is the purpose of prophetic ministry. To build the body of Christ and to show them the purpose of God. This wisdom is foundational to using the prophetic in a manner that will build up the local church. This is building up. This is not for show. Warning. Every gift God gives has a counterfeit that the enemy tries to imitate. Yan ang bantayan natin. Gagayahin ang gagayahin ng kaaway ang gift ng Holy Spirit to deceive the body of Christ. Dream is another way of God speaking to us. It is symbolic, not literal. They are symbolic. It is not literal, okay? So, many times people will, um, especially women, will approach me and really ask me, uh, Pastora, bakit nag-dream po ako? Buntis ako. Okay? So, usually kasi when you're pregnant, God has planted something in you that's about to be birthed out. Kaya nga sabi ko, hindi literal yun. Okay? So, having a baby, meaning God has entrusted you with a ministry. Transportation is a way that how you will travel along your life, the kind of ministry that you have or the journey that you have. Example, I dream once that I was riding on a tricycle. Walang laman yung loob. Pero nasa likod ako ng driver. Eh, may hawak akong baby. And tinadaan namin ang dilim at ang daming aso. So, nung nagising ako, parang tapos after that, nakarating kami sa bahay, binigay ko yung baby sa, sa guy. Then binigay niya ako 1,000. So, sabi ko, Lord, ano yun? Okay. Usually, when I have a dream that the Lord will give me interpretation because has given me the gift of interpretation, okay? Pero minsan, pina, pinapasa ko rin kay Julius. Okay, Julius. Kaya kung sa, sa, sa kanya nyo nalang ipasa yung dream ko. <laughs> so, what does it mean? If there will be a season in my life that I will go through so darkness, but dogs, surrounded by dogs, threatened by dogs, by religious people. Remember, sa so dogs, sa so Bible, religious people, Judaism. Okay. Bakit walang laman yung tricycle? Ba't hindi ako nakasakay doon? Kasi po, yung driver ng tricycle is the Holy Spirit guiding me. Kaya walang laman kasi nobody will be able to equip up and cope up with my journey. The ministry that I have one day will give to the, to the man, will be given to the Lord, the Father, and then after I finish all my tasks, God will give me 1,000. 1,000 speaks of glory. Okay? Pagka meron akong in-entrust sa kanya, Lord, ito na yung ministry na keep up. So, ibig sabihin, in-entrust ko na sa kanila. Pero, ando to pa rin ako. So, every time, binibigyan niya ako 1,000, binibigyan niya ako ng glory, which nangyari because the glory of God, the anointing of God is growing in my life. So, man, numbers may ibig sabihin din yan. Okay? So, Transportation one time, uh, nag-dream ako na nagda-drive naman ako ng truck. Okay? Sabi ko, ang laki-laki, bus ba yun o truck? Sa Davao. So sabi ko, 
Ang laki naman nito, Lord. Ano ibig sabihin niyan? The kind of ministry that will happen in Davao is something big. So, yan ang mga many times the dream are promises of God, but you need to have an interpretation. Then another dream I have is uh, merong humahabol sa akin, sunod ng sunod, na mayaman. Yung tao, si Elon Musk, kaya yung si Elon Musk, di ba, multi-billionaire, sabi ko, hindi naman ako, ba't pupunta sa akin to, may nahabol-habol ako, no, it's symbolic of the wealthy people will follow me because of the truth that I have. Okay? So, makita mo, merong mga ibig sabihin yan. Kaya nga, importante ma-interpret nyo through the Holy Spirit, and sometimes if I don't have, you know, clarity, I will just ask uh, someone who is so gifted with that. So, Ang number one then is sometimes when you have a dream, ang pinaka-leading is peace of God. Direction from God. Isaiah 55.12 For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. So when you encounter trees in the Bible, speaks of people. Okay? So, when you encounter mountains, it speaks of the presence of God. Hills, sometimes it speaks of ministry. So, nakita natin na may symbolic po kasi, metaphor po talaga, okay? So, usually, when I'm guided, it's more of the joy and the peace. Yan po yung guide, barometer po. Okay, example, when I had a uh, travel, last, last namin ni Mary was in Butuan. 2020, before nag-lockdown. So, nangyari, yung uwi nila ng Bohol is Sunday. E Monday yung flight ko. So, sabi ko, hala, mag lang ako. So, sabi ni Lord, tumawag ka, mag-google mag ka ano yung hotel available sa butuan. So, yung, ano ako, sinilid niya ako, sabi ko, ah, ito. Sabi ko, Lord, mag lang ako. And butuan, I'm not familiar in butuan. Alam mo yun? So, pag I'm not familiar with any pieces, nag pa ako. But after making reservation, ang saya-saya ako. Tapos may peace ako. Go ako. Kasi sabi ko, Lord, pag ganito, ay, hindi, ay, hindi ako mag-expect ng Sunday para Sunday na rin ang flight ko, may kasama ko. Eh, kaya lang, may joy and peace ako. Ibig sabihin, go. You see, when you have joy and peace, especially, pag kunyari, naghahanap ako ng mga tao connected, must have a joy and a peace. That is my barometer, my guidance palagi. Pag nawala ang peace, big sabihin, may dinidesisyonan ako na hindi kay Lord. Okay? So, in Hebrews 5.14, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good and evil. So, ibig sabihin, we need to distinguish good and evil through practice, discerning through the Word of God. Gift of prophecy need to practice. It is like a muscle that need to exercise to develop. In time, the process becomes easier. You will be able to move up in the amount of spiritual weight you lift. Understand the spiritual law. As you hear more, hearing will be given to you. When you practice, God will give you. Kaya nga sabi niya, if you're, if you're faithful in small things, I'll give you more. Pag di ka faithful sa small, makikita mo nag-diminish. Nagiging carnal, nagiging flesh yung gift mo instead of spirit. Kaya doon kumapasok yung human spirit. Bakit? Ang tagal mo na hindi pinapractice yan eh, okay? The longer you go without working out the weaker you get and the harder you gain back what you lost. So, nagdi-diminish. Although God will not, ano, uh, hindi yan binabawi, pero nalulus mo rin yung effectivity. Para bang, kagumingi, kasi na-experience ko rin yan, na-encounter ko, ang tagal na niya na hindi. Tapos, pagkausap mo na, parang, hindi na siya yung gifted dati. Ah. Ganun. So, bakit? Kasi hindi na napapractice. The prophetic ministry sustains hope in us that strengthen us to know God's will with much greater certainty because God's will has been prophetically revealed and confirmed throughout our history. We have been strengthened in times of weakness, barrenness, heavenly silence, 
persecution and lack of anointing. Kaya ma, ma ano po yung prophetic ministry. Very it's a gift to the body of Christ. There is an overriding and undergirding corporate consciousness that God is with us despite the obstacles and difficulties, mistakes and setbacks we encounter. It has often stimulated our repentance, motivation, sacrifice, sense of awe, and other like issues of the heart that are so often intangible. Prophecy should never be an addition to the Bible. Again, Listen, prophecy should never be an addition to the Bible. Don't collect prophecies. The Bible is God's complete revelation. Do not make prophecy an alternative to the Bible. Maraming Christians, ganyan. They rely on prophecy more than the Word of God. Wala pa pong nag-prophesy sa akin. Well, every time magpo-prophesy sa akin, na-intimidate sa akin. Kaya sabi ko, huwag mo na lang akong sabihan. Alam ko na yan. Gaganunin ko na lang. Kasi minsan may, 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 may mga prophet na medyo mayabang. Sora, meron ng word of God. Really? Sabi ko, ako, marami akong promises. Kay Lord, ano yung gusto mong, ano yung sinasabi ni Lord sa'yo? Ah, marami ka na pala promises. Okay na yan. Why? Kasi pag marami kang pro- promises kay Lord, yun, you can rely on that. Eh, your prophecies are not, they're not scriptural. If anything, pwedeng human spirit, human ano yan, hinuhugot lang yan. Dahil what? Misan, bias siya sa'yo. He highly favored ka niya. He will say things. Misan naman galit siya, di ba? Tapos ano? So, makita natin that Bible, sino ang pinaka may authority magbigay sa atin ng promises? Si Lord. Kaya nga pagka meron akong situation, in every situation, okay, my, my, my always, my pattern, okay, in my life is to get the promise of God. Kaya nga nangungulekta ako ng pangako but not prophecy. And a lot of Christians, they collect prophecies more than promises. So, you are relying on what? You're standing on the sand, not on the rock. Kaya pagka may nangyayari, iniisip mo. Usually, people who will come to me, Pastor, anong kalooban ni Lord sa akin? Develop your, no? Enhance your relationship with God. Sometimes, hindi sila, alam mo, hindi sila satisfied. Is there anything more? Eh, tanong ka kay Lord. It is safe. Although, may mga times talaga, alam ko ang kalooban ng Diyos sa isang tao, but I will not reveal everything. See? Minsan sabi ko, Ano problema na ito, Lord? Ito, yan. Sabi ko, sige, I will just keep it to myself until given a chance. Pero there are times I will pray forward and uh, confront, depending on the maturity, depending on my relationship with the person. But uh, if I'm close with the person, I can be uh, straightforward with that person. But if I'm not close and I can sense something else, then I will just keep quiet. But Pero pag nagtanong siya, yun ang opportunity ko. Sasabihin ko talaga. And many times they don't like what they hear coming from me. Diretso po kasi ko eh. Many live by prophecy rather than scriptures. They consider a pro- prophecy a now word and they prefer it than the old word. Prophecy is a good supplement but not a substitute. This is given for personal use but not for general use. Scriptures are for all Christians everywhere applied in every age and generation. Prophecy must be tested, weighed, and judged by others, not the person given the prophecy. It may be from the flesh or of the devil. God wants to change our identity from just being gifted servants into being intimate friends. With Him as Moses was. Na marami pong gifted, pero walang relationship kay Lord. In the new covenant, God gave the Holy Spirit to all so we could all receive revelation about what is on His heart. He loves to share with us His thoughts, His actions. We must possess a tenacious pursuit of prophecy. We were all meant to hear, see, and operate in the Spirit. 
It is our inheritance to prophesy. One reason that people are weak in prophecy is because a lack of confidence that they can receive from God. We can receive the small whisper from his heart. The question that always arises was, was that God or not? That is the struggle of every Christian. Vertical bato. The risk of failure cripples some with fear that they will be rejected if they make mistakes. Make room for mistakes sa mga gifted. Church, make room. The enemy knows this. And so he strikes at our hearts with accusations to stir up our fears. People who long to grow in the prophetic must overcome their fear of judgment and rejection. The leadership team can help this by nurturing and making sure we judge fruit, not methods. We judge the prophetic by the fruit it bears, not the methods that it operates with. The fruits we want in the prophetic people and those who receive from them is greater passion for Jesus and holy living we honor the written word. We must create a safe atmosphere of encouragement with much mercy and patience for mistakes so that people can grow in confidence and stature in their prophetic gifting without fearing rebuke and rejection. One of the best places to grow in the prophetic is in more private, small group settings. Groups give mercy to those with teachable spirit. Kaya lang, kailangan din teachable tayo, okay? However, we must avoid unsanctified mercy to those who refuse to cooperate with stubborn spirit. Pag stubborn, ayaw magpakurek, drop it. Let the people know that they must take risks to grow even if sometimes they make mistakes. Kailangan, open lang tayo sa correction. Kaya mali yan, okay? Mali yung nakuha mo. Kaya kailangan may confirmation from one to another. Diba sa Old Testament, they need two witnesses. Kaya kailangan may two witnesses mo. Solomon taught us that the oxen brings great strength and increase to the farm. However, he makes a mess in the barn. The increase of strength is worth the mess that comes with it. So, sa umpisa, messy. But pag everybody's growing the gift, it's all worth it. Basta may nag-guide lang. Meron lang isang sensitive, oy, sanay na, to guide everyone. Na, okay, sige. So, not everyone we will start right. Okay? Merong-merong sa out of five, may isang kamal, apat mali, sige lang, go on. Go on, until makita mo, ma-enhance yan. Exercise pa rin. I, I'm here to guide you. I'm here to correct you. Well, andito naman, mga prof, hindi naman ako sinasabi ko, ako lang. Merong, ginaano ko rin yan, kinoconsult ko rin yan sa mga gifted. Okay? Napansin ko lang, especially intercession. Uh, I have the gift of intercession. But when I am with intercessors, my gift is not operating. Why? I let them arise. You see? Kailangan may bigayan lang. Hindi, ako, I'm a leader, but pag nakita ko na okay itong gift na to, sige, ikaw yan. Hindi yung, ha, ikaw pa rin, ikaw lahat, ikaw, tapos magre-reklamo ka, pagod ka. Diba? So, napapansin ko yan. When I'm uh, uh, with an intercessor, tone down ang in-gift ko. Bakit? Kaya yan, ikaw yan. But mostly, pag nag-isa ko, lumalabas yung gift ko. Kaya pagka minsan, pagka nakita ko yung gift na ito above kaysa sa akin, I let them. Sige, ikaw yan. Go for it. Magbigayan tayo. It's not on the position level or what, authority. But you see, when I'm around, don't fear to exercise your gift. Kinoobserbahan ko lang naman kayo, just some to guide you. Minsan kasi pag nandito ako, parang wala na. Wala na. Tahimik na lahat. Bakit? Ano nangyari? Huwag kayong ma-intimidate sa akin. Okay? Feel free. Feel free. At gusto ko nga nalalaman yung gift nyo eh. It will help me. Para hindi lahat ng burden sa akin. Alam niyo po ba? Ito ang problema eh. 
because of my sensitivity, lahat ng problema ng every ministry, nararamdaman ko, karga ko. Sabi ko, bakit ako lang, Lord? Sabi ni, sabi ni Lord, eh di sila sensitive eh. Sensitivity of the need of the ministry based on how much you care for the ministry and for the people. Pag ang tao walang care, they are not sensitive. Kaya importante, cultivate your love for your brethren. Tama. Kasi kung wala kayong love, nararamdaman niyo wala lang kapagkain, hindi si Lord yun. Pero pag you care, anong nararamdaman ko wala ng pagkain ito mga taong to? So, I'll do something. Sabi ko, bakit? Ako lang. Kaya minsan sabi ko, parang ako lagi yung nangangamusta. Walang nangangamusta sa akin kung may pagkain pa ako. Diba? Kamusta ka na dyan, Pastora? Ah, buhay pa. Buhay na buhay. Okay? So, makita natin, that's why I am so sensitive because you know, mother is sick, nanay ako, nanay niyo ako, so, alam mo, sensitive ako. So, ministry na to, may problem to. Okay, anong problema? to sige. Hindi ko kasi sinasabi yan to everybody na itong ministry na to, I'm supporting ito, ito, inaalagaan ko ito, lahat, binibigyan ko, binibigyan ko ng pera, ito, lahat. Kasi walang nagtatanong sa kanila sa daming pastor, walang nagtatanong sa mga affiliation. Kailangan ako pa, may nagsabi sa akin, Pastora, bakit ikaw lang nagtatanong sa amin? yung iba hindi nagtatanong. Ngayong tayo, nag-seminar, nagkakakilala tayo, magtanungan kayo, pwede? Baka natatakot kayo magsabi yung kapatiran, wala kaming makain. Ako rin eh. Paano yun? Pareho kayong gutom. <laughs> hindi pwedeng magutom ang kristyano. Kaya nga, sabi ko sa inyo, personality ng CRCM is family. Andiyan ako, nakikilam. O, oh, anong problema? Ano? Gusto? Ano? ano? Magtanungan kayo para it will lessen my burden because CRCM will be multiplied. Dadami pa tayo. Paano kung lahat na lang nasa akin? Kaya nandyan kayo, hindi porket kayo na belong to another place, wala ka ng pakailan sa, hey, you belong to Davao, wala ka ng pakailan sa Antipolo, wala ka ng pakailan sa Bolo, wala ka ng, magkaroon kayo ng pakailaman kasi we are a body of Christ. If you depend on me most of your time, ano mangyayari sa akin? Okay? Minsan may nag-reveal sa akin, kaya ako nagkaroon ng uh, uh, heart failure. Because of the burden of the ministry, it takes it is taking toll in my body. Okay, can you help me out? Can you do that? Kaya nandito kayo para magkakakilala kayo. Hindi ko naman siya sabi ng nakai lumapit sa akin. Lumapit parin kayo sa akin, okay? Siempre welcome naman kayo. But the thing is, I just want to spread. Because sometimes I'm I'm feeling the burden. Sabi ko bakit ako lang to? Okay, especially sa kamarin. Ba't ako lang to? Ba't ako lang nakakaramdam nito? Ano nangyari sa mga pastor ng kamarin? Di ba? Di ba? Hmm? Di ba? Mga elders, mga workers. Okay. It's time. Ministry is a hard work. I tell you, it's a hard work. It's a difficult work. Okay? The gift of healing. This is important. There are three forms of healing. Divine, quick or gradual but permanent and complete. The spirit is strengthened and edified. The cure is whole, brings spiritual and physical blessing. Human or fleshy healing through medicine. Doctor. The person is free of the condition for a time. Some, sometimes it will return and need further ministry. No effect in the spirit, good or bad. Satanic, 
obtained from spiritism medium healing is real but the devastating and disorienting effect in the spirit may use devices or some kind of objects can bring relief but the disease is shifted to the spirit and has a damaging effect of the to the spirit may enjoy physical health but further from Christ ibig sabihin no pag na pagaling ka pero napalayo ka kay Kristo i have encountered christians who resorted to object minsan yung meron silang naka suot na bracelet okay one time may experience po kami dito eh nag communion kami syempre pag communion oh, ito pa yung way way back pa po to wala pa po yung mga pandemic communion syempre i i experience na at saka everybody who will take partake of that may relief may relief Ang nangyari dito sa isang uh, worker namin, nagkaano siya, lalong nag-pain, nam namimilipit. Di sabi ko, ano nangyari, Lord? Meron pala siyang bracelet na suot. Di ba sabi sa Bible, if you treat the body, ano sabi? You will be, ano, you have curse. So, instead na ma-relief at magkaroon ng healing, na-reverse. Tumakit lalo yung, ano niya, yung, yung sakit niya. So, nung pinag-pray namin, I remember si Diane kasama ko noon. Sabi ko, punta tayo dito sa baba. Sabi ko sa akin, pray kita. So, nag-pray kami. Alam mo yung spirit, pababa ng pababa ng pababa sa paa niya, ga umalis. Sabi ko, alisin mo yung bracelet mo. Yan na nag-cost niyan eh. Then, I went to a friend of mine, nasa hospital siya, sabi niya, friend, please visit me. Ang dami kong sakit. Ah, okay. Sabi nila, dala ka ng communion. Okay, communion. Tapos sabi ko, Lord, paano ko to i-address? Kasi meron siyang object na binili. 100,000 yun, ha? Pag nilalagay niya daw dito, nakakagaling. So, nung sinabi ko sa kanya, friend, willing ka ba i-give up yan? Oh, wala naman to. Hayaan mo na yan. Hindi, hindi. I-give up mo yan. Friend, 100,000 to. Hindi <laughs> ka gagaling siya. Communion tayo. Pero mo nang gamitin yan. Then I left. Hindi niya ginilwap eh. Mga object. Okay. It may use devices or some kind of objects can bring relief but the disease is shifted to the spirit. Alam mo, after nun, backslider din. Those who experience satanic healing when they come to Christ, their condition will return. Yun ang problema. Pag napagaling yan ng Satan at pag nakakilala kay Lord, naniwala kay Lord, yung kanyang disease, babalik. Babalik ni Satan yan. Eh. First controversy, not seeking healing from medical or surgical aid because it is an act of belief. Ito yung mali. Na hindi mo kailangan ng doktor, hindi mo kailangan ng gamot. Kasi pag naggamot ka, ng doktor ka, ang bilip yan. That is a lie of the enemy. Sickness is a result of sin and a messenger of Satan. Since Jesus bore our sickness, we should be enjoying perfect health. Yan ang sabi nila. Uy, hina ako na ni Lord. Kailangan perfect health tayo. Kaya nga minsan nung nagkasakit ako, di ba, may testimony ako. May nagsabi sa akin, Pastora, dapat di ka nagkakasakit. Ah, talaga? Bakit? Servant ka ni Lord. Kailangan di ka nagkakasakit. Ah, Wonder Woman pala ako. Second controversy is not to seek spiritual way for healing. Ibig sabihin, lahat medical lang. Huwag mo ko ipag-pray. I'm okay. Wala na pala ito. This is when you separate the word this is, but this is D I S separate E A S E. Is trouble in our mind and emotion. There are belief that only and holy and healthy are tied together. It is fatal to compare people. You may accuse someone of sin because of his sickness. 
can cause a deep damage to the person. Imagine, remember, si Job. Sinabi pa ni Lord, have you noticed my servant Job? He is what? Upright. And yet God allowed it because he had a profound purpose for it. And yet, amazingly, Job never knew why it happened. Hindi niya naintitinda. Bakit nangyari sa akin yun? God never explained himself. There are times God will never explain. Simon's mother-in-law was the least he dealt with, but the rest was serious cases. It is an indication that nothing is too small or big to the Lord, but if there's something we can do or cope with, He expects us to use our common sense. Tama! Paano ba yung common sense? Example, man was praying for a rain. Bakit? Kasusunog yung bahay niya eh. So, mihingi siya, Lord, bigyan mo ako ng ulan. Mas practical yata tumawag ng bumbero, tama? In the same way with healing. Ikaw ba kung masakit ang ano mo, ngipin mo, sasabihin mo, Lord, palitan mo na lang yung ngipin ko, bunutin mo in Jesus' name. O mas practical pumunta ng dentist. Huh? Minsan, we try to spiritualize everything. Kaya nga minsan nagsasabi sa akin, Pastora, dapat di ka nagkakasakit. Bakit hindi ako magkakasakit? I'm, my body is subject to the world, to the food that I eat. Ibig sabihin, wala effect niya. But the promise of God is hawakan niya ako. I almost died 2020 and yet here I am. Na-hospital ako, I have maintenance. Sabi nila, ba't ka nagme-maintenance? Meron na minsan na sabi, kailan hinto mo na yan, di ka dapat nagagamot. I will not take risk. Bakit? Hindi sinasabi sa akin ni Lord, ihinto ko yun. Dahil ever since, binibigyan niya ako ng provision because way back, it cost me 24,000 a month ang maintenance ko. Buti na lang ngayon, ano na lang, less than 10. Pero may sinasabi, sabi ko, alam mo minsan sabi, sabi, sabi sa akin, may nagsabi sa akin, Pastora, you lack faith. Bakit? Nagme-maintenance ka eh. Oh, okay. So, that's your measurement of faith? Sabi niya, yes. Really? Remember, Peter? Si Peter. Nung nakita nila si Jesus Christ nag-walk on the water. Ano sabi ni Peter? Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Yun ang revelation sa akin ni Lord. Kasi before I had my heart failure, wala akong maintenance. That 2019, 2018, pinahinto ni Lord sa akin. Sabi ko, Lord, is it you, Lord? Is it you? Yes. Hininto ko. So marami nagsabi, even my sister, delikado yan. Pagka nag-take ka ng pang high blood, hininto mo, delikado yan. Baka bigla ka, bla, bla, bla. Hindi ako miki po. Kasi I, I heard from God. Then, 2020, it happened to me. Ano sabi sa akin? Kasi hininto mo yan. No, no, no. You, you see, you cannot take risk without you being led by the Spirit of God. Especially, sabi nga ni Peter, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Until God tells me, Grace, stop na yung medicine, I will not stop. Dahil minsan sinabi ko, Lord, can I stop? Alam mo sabi ni Lord sa akin? Not yet. Not yet. You see, guidance. Minsan maraming kristyano na didisgrasya kasi mali. Akala mo may faith ka, pero wala kang faith. Anong result niya nang hindi ka uminom ng gamot? Natotorture ka? Ibig sabihin, hindi kay Lord yan, uminom ng gamot. Mali yung mga sinakakala natin na, alam mo, ang sakit-sakit, namimilipit ka na. I know when it is an attack and when I know when it's physical. When I am attacked, Okay? But there are nights, grabe yung sikmura ko talaga. Ang tindi, nagigising ako sa sakit. Sabi ko, Lord, ang sakit, halos talagang namimilipit ako. Yes, yes, eh. Tayo ko dito, talagang namilipit ako. Sabi ko, ano, tapos nagtangs lang ako, pero nawala. Sabi ko, Lord, hindi ako iinom ng uh, uh, pang sikmura. Okay? I'll stand. Nung nagpipray ako, nawala. Oh, wala yun. 
Sabi ko, okay, spirit yun. From then on, alam ko, when I, may sinisikmura ko, ano ba yun? Uh, katak yun. Okay? Then, there are times when I feel na uh, nagpapalpitate ako and, and trying to discern, is it physical or is it spiritual? Pag sinabi niyang ano, spiritual, just pray in the spirit, nawawala. Minsan kasi may dinadala ako. Okay? So, there are many times na meron dinadala. Meron ako dinadala. I will elaborate on that later sa intercession. Okay? So, we have everlasting life now, but the body is groaning. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling within us will quicken our body to help. Totoo yun. The spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, like kung dinideclare to, Jesus Christ raising from, ano, He raised from the dead is the same spirit that uh, dwells in me, sa Romans yan eh, dwells in me, will quicken my body. So when I'm not feeling well, I declare this. Then sabi ko nga, Lord, the spirit, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. That is Romans 8.1. So makita mo, may mga declaration ako, tapos nagli-lift off yung application, uh, 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 afflictions, ibig sabihin spirit yon. Okay? So, makikita natin na there are really afflictions, but fight it out, that is your inheritance. Sabi ko nga, one time, may pinagsipray ako, Lord, ano po yung kalooban mo? Kasi pinagsipray ko talaga siya ng healing. Anong sabi niya sa akin? Grace, no. I will use that affliction for my glory and for her faith. Okay, so back off ako. Sinabi ko. God allows sickness or health. Allows, but it does not originate for, from Him. So a person used for His glory and purpose. Paul's first use of power was to cause the blind man to see. Diba si Paul? Blind man? Nagkaroon siya ng sight. But in the book of Philippians, he mentioned about Epaphroditus that nearly died. Ba't di niya pinag-pray? Ito ang blind man na pag-pray niya, pero itong si Epaphroditus nearly died. Kasama sila eh. Hindi? In the book of Mark, there was crowd where he healed every one of them. Remember sa Mark, sa book of Mark? Diba? Ang dami niyang hinhealed. But the following day, nahanap siya ng mga disciples niya. Oh, andito ka pala. Sabi niya, marami ng tao. The crowd is waiting. Anong sabi ni Jesus Christ? We must go to the other town. I did not come here to heal but to preach the gospel. Jesus So makita natin, the balance is what God, what is God's will. In the situation, it is in general, God's will is to heal. But the balance is, what is God's will in the situation? Anybody who's ministering somebody for healing is capable of mistakes. Paul was wrong about his affliction. Remember, he pleaded with God. Lord, remove this affliction three times. But God, no. Sabi no, my grace is sufficient. In Bethesda, Jesus healed just one. Many has wrong belief that God wants us happy and comfortable. The gift of healing is not for mass healing. Kasi misa may nagsasabi, Naku, pag binigyan lang ako ni Lord ng gift of healing, pupunta ako sa hospital, lahat sila. Pagagalingin ko. That's not the gift for. Kaya para bang gusto gusto namin Lord pumunta. Nangyari ba 'yan sa at ano sa Book of Acts? Sino ba na? All gifts are for somebody. Something to give or pass on. Only one gift is for us, the gift of tongues. Unless with accompanied by interpretation, it can be given to somebody for ministry. Gifts are not given to us to make us important. Gifts confers to us that we may do good with them, to be empowered for His glory and employed in doing good to others, not distributed for mere honor and advantage of those who have them, but for the benefit of the church to promote Christianity 
They are not given for show, but for service. Not for pomp and ostentation, but for edification. Be careful of fixed pattern. Hindi yan fixed. Okay? Cannot lay rules. It can be same condition, but different situation. Okay? Example. Heart condition. Minsan, may sinasabi si Lord, oh, ito, heal. May sinasabi, may message. Mag-pray. Many times, the healing of God will take time. Why? Because he's accomplishing something in the person. Okay. But in my case, my confidence is in God. Okay? May, uh, naalala ko yun, in 2012, I was, I had an angiogram and diagnosed to have a bypass. Diba? Remember, alam niyo naman yan. And then, sabi, ayaw ako i-release ng hospital. Sabi niya, you need to have a bypass or else in one year, you will have a heart attack. So, sabi ko kay Lord, wait, uwi muna ako. I'll pray about it. Then, may sinabi siya sa akin, like, you are a new crazy. Sabi ko, Lord, bakit ganun? Papa ko namatay sa heart disease. Pinsan ko, uncle ko, they died young. Wala pang 50. At that time, nasa 40 plus pa lang ako. Kaya nga sabi ng cardio ko, yung performer cardio ko, delikado ka. Nakakaisipin mo, doktor. So, so, sabi ko, Lord, di ba sabi mo, the, ang sabi mo sa word, that Jesus took my curse. Curse to eh, bakit meron ako niyan? Ano mo sabi ni Lord? You're a new creation. Okay. Those who are in Christ, the new creation, the old has gone, the new has come. Di ba? So, sabi ko, what's wrong? Please make me understand this. Ano sabi niya? When I said to the Israelites, I have given you the land, fight it out, grace. Wow. I fight it out. Through faith, through what? Holding on to the promises. And then, here comes, 2012. Sabi ni Lord sa akin, this is your season of mission. You will travel a lot. Sabi ko, Lord, bawal sa akin. Sino may sabi? Sila, sila, sila. Sabi niya, take my word. And this is what God did to me. Before I left for the very first was Bohol, sabi, may sabi ng friend ko, Lika, dalawi natin yung, ano, yung friend namin na may sakit. Sige. On the course of her ano, conversation, nagkakausap kami kasi singer ko nga yung condition ko. So sabi niya, alam mo may kilala akong pastor eh. Ganyan din. Nag-eroplano, inatake. So, sabi ko, ah, okay. Tapos sabi niya, meron din kami kilala. Yung friend ko sabi niya, may kilala rin ako friend. Nagsipris, tumumba. Ha? Bakit? Inatake. Ha? So, sabi ko, si, nung pag-uwi ko, bakit ko narinig to? Sabi ko, sana hindi na lang ako umalis. Kasi paalis na ako eh. Sabi ko, Lord, inaatake, may sakit. pag e ko, ko, tapos magsipris ako two days. Ano yun? Sabi niya, have faith, Grace. According to your faith. So, sakay ko na aeroplano, nagtataxing na paatras, nagpalpitate ako. Gusto kong mag-walk out na aeroplano. Sabi ko, bababa ako, Lord. Nagpapalpitate ako, makatakihin ako rito. Pero alam mo yung sabi ni Lord, hold on, Grace. According to your faith. According to your faith. Ganun lang ng ganun si Lord. Sige, Lord, hawak mo ko. Then, Two days, then on third day, nag-freeze ako, naka-uwi ako. Sabi ko, oh, sabi ko, that was great, Lord. So sabi ko, okay, Lord. So lumakas ako na lumakas nun. I'm taking risk. Di ba? 20, uh, 2017 or 18 yata. Uh, 2019, I was rushed to the hospital. So meron na namang ano, meron na namang uh, diagnose sa akin. And then, sabi ko, Lord, ano na naman to? Okay na ako, malakas na ako eh. Alam mo, sabi ni Lord sa akin, I remember that the verse, Will I pursue, overtake, recover all, and nothing will be missing? Tanong ni David, kay, kay God, sa Siklag. And sabi ni Lord sa akin, Grace, you have overtaken the enemy. You have really 
uh, pursuit and overtake, sabi niya, recover all. Because the enemy is trying to steal your healing, fight it out again. Okay. Then, 2020 again. Ano na naman to? Sabi ko, Lord. Sabi ko sa kanya, bakit laging heart? Bakit laging ito? Laging sakit? You know why? Because that is my greatest fear, magkasakit. And God uses that to strengthen my faith and to deepen my dependency. And the enemy has something to attack me kasi alam niya weakness ko and fear ko. The moment I overcome that fear, relax na naman ako. Another one na naman, may pain na naman. Bakit lagi? Bakit inaalaw? Pero sabi ni Lord, I have given you the land. Christ paid for our healing. You need to fight it out. If you know, you go through the doctor, go to the doctor. But don't be in balance in your faith. Kaya nga, pag may gamot ka, pinagagamot ka, inumin mo. Huwag yung ayoko. Minsan sabihin, kasi may mga mali talagang doctrine, delikado yun. Kaya minsan, alam mo yung sabi nila na, Uy, pastora, anointed ka, ba't ka nagkakasakit, ha? Huh? So, ibig sabihin yung mga anointed, alam mo, the great men, great men, they die of sickness. Ay, hiningi ko lang, Lord, I don't wanna die. Kunin mo ako through rapture or kunin mo ako through matutulog lang ako. Okay? The importance of anointing. Anointing persons or things were anointed in the Old Testament to signify holiness or separation unto God. Fundamentally, the anointing is an act of God and mean bestowal of divine favors or appointment to a special place or function in the purpose of God. Anointing symbolized equipment for service. Equipping yan, hindi yan pampayabang. Is associated with the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Pouring of the Holy Spirit is like pouring water into the glass. The function, sabi sa 1 John 2.27, the function of the anointing is to teach us. Pag hindi tayo teachable, hindi lalago yung anointing na yan. Kaya minsan napapansin natin, every one of us is anointed because we have the anointed one. Pero lalago dapat yan. Pero pag hindi lumalago yan, ibig sabihin hindi tayo natututo kay Lord. Because sabi sa 1 John 2.27, the function of the anointing is to teach us. Tayo muna, turuan. We must grow in everything that God has entrusted us. Kaya nga sabi niya dyan sa Acts 9.22 and James 5.16, we see how Paul grew in power and even in our prayer should grow in power and effectiveness. Faith, obedience, and faithfulness, ay ito po ang kailangan to grow in the anointing. Kaya nga, di ba, parable of the talent. God has given you 10, you have to produce 10. God has given you 5, give you 5. Ano, double it. The key is to learn to carry our cross. You cannot grow in anointing if you are doing it in your own way and you are very stubborn. Kaya maraming nag-umpis sa anointed after a year or two. Pag na-meet ko sila ulit, wala na anointing. Bakit? Wala na. Hindi na teachable kay Lord. You know, kailangan teachable tayo sa Holy Spirit. You know, many times, pag nagtatangs ako, sinasabi sa akin ni Lord yung mali ko. Sinasabi niya sa akin, Grace, ito yung ginawa mo. I'm not pleased with that. So magre-repent ako. Sabi ko, Lord, forgive me. Talaga, Lord. You know, we talk. Pero hindi nyo napansin, mali yung sarap ng ko. Okay? Durability. Kailangan durable po tayo. It will bring durability strength. Not to do things in excess, must be balanced. 
You must always forgive any offense incurred by the people whom we have loved, helped, and cared for. That is the key. Ito yung napansin ko. Anyone who caused me pain, pag napatawad ko na wala na, I can hold, ah, parang walang nangyari. Tingin ko sa tao, parang hindi niya ako sinaktan. I can accept easily. And I don't bring the past. Uy, bakit mo ginawa sa akin? Hindi ganun. Wala lang. Even proven in my life, even to court. Why? Yun ay sinasabi ni Lord eh. Exercise justice. What does it mean to exercise justice? Be fair. Wala kang bias. Dahil the moment bias ka sa taong nakasakit sa'yo, you are practicing injustices. Pero you need to balance also na you cannot just, you know, tignan mo kung nabago, may nag-repent pa. Okay? Dito naman makikita, ah, Lord, minsan, minsan may sinasabi sa akin si Lord, oh, great, sige, supporta mo itong tao, okay, Lord. Minsan may mga lumalapit naman sa akin, sabi ni Lord, no. The balance is, Huwag ka rin magpaabuso sa mga taong alam mo abusado. Pero ako, when I help, I help out of love. Not yun sabi mo na tinuturuan din yung ibang tao ng faith. Not because they're abusive. Kasi alam ko pag abusado eh. Okay? Pero so far, wala na mga abusado rito. And I'm, I'm so thankful that uh, everyone has really, you know, you have a heart. All endeavors done in sincerity will always be fulfilling and rewarding even if people around us fail us, betray us. The key to overcome is turn to the Lord for comfort and healing. Yun na yung sinasabi ko eh. Number one, bantayan yung offense. Kasi every one of us will be offended. Ministry is very offensive work. Masasaktan ka sa tao. Minsan hindi naman, niya, hindi naman intention. Alam mo yun, parang personality lang niya eh. Okay? Parang minsan wala akong ibig sabihin. Wala naman ako ibig sabihin. Pero ang dating sa kanila, iba. So, minsan pagka nararamdaman ko na na-offend yung tao, oh, so sorry na ako, sorry, gano, ano, ganito, ganyan. Kasi yun nga, pag sensitive ka, sensitive ka, even yung, yung, yung uh, minsan na, na bigyan ko ng message na medyo nainis, Naramdaman ko yun. Wala naman sa harap ko yung tao, pero naramdaman ko yun. Nagapo, ano ako, napakumbaba ako. Pasensya na, sorry ha. You see? Kasi minsan sa text lang, alam ko kung nasasaktan yan eh. Kung, kung, kung may dating. Kaya, inaano ko. Inabago ko. Strife between people, a leader must not take sides. Assure them of your sympathy without compromising and taking sides. Bring them to the word. Encourage them what the Lord can do in the situation. Remember si Joshua? Ano sabi niya? Sabi niya nung na-encounter niya, the commander chief. Ano sabi niya? It was the Lord. Are you for us or for the enemy? Ano sabi ni nung commander chief? Neither. Take your sandals for this place, the holy place. Ano yun? Nung binigay sa akin ni Lord yung revelation, sabi niya, Grace, in every situation na may conflict, don't take sides. Huwag kang kakapi sa isa, bring them to the word. Pag ayaw nilang magsettle, then let them rest. It happened to me many times sa mga friends ko, pag may away, conflict, even sa family, may conflict, I don't take sides. Okay? So what I do, hindi ko siya sabi, kampi kita, kampi ko yan. Hindi. I don't take sides kahit alam ko kung sino yung tama. Hindi ko siya sabi, tama ako. Ganun. Parang, sige lang, I'll try to be neutral. Eh. Kasi nga mahirap. Pero minsan na may misinterpret ako, may misunderstood ako because the way I handle situation. Kaya nga yesterday, sabi ko nga sa inyo, being a leader, when you are operating in the spirit, you will be misunderstood dahil pag yung mga kasama mo, karnal, hindi ka nila maiintindihan. Kaya nga, pag ganun, maghanda-handa kayo. Okay? Gifts are used to accomplish God's purposes and dependent upon seven things. Humility is the key to receive God's fullness of the Holy Spirit. 
close relationship with the Lord, to be sensitive to His Spirit. All gifts are operated by faith. Often, we are afraid to step out into something new. We are worried about what people may think of us. Fear of man is a snare. Our only desire is to have God's approval upon our lives. Then we must have desire. We must practice. And then a lifestyle of worship. Never seek influence for yourself, but only seek the Lord and be willing to take His yoke. Until you learn to do all things for the sake of the gospel, the more influence that you have, the greater danger that you will be in. We must have faith to do what we are called to do, but it must be faith in the Lord, not in your gift, not in your faith. It is not enough to lose confidence in ourselves that will lead to insecurity. Misat kasi ay, tiya, ay, ang galing-galing mo, hindi ako magaling. False humility. If we will not fill the void with the confidence in Him, then there will be unbalance. Our compassion must be subject to His Spirit. Hindi lahat pagkakahabagan natin. Hindi lahat bibigyan. Hindi lahat pagbibigyan. Kailangan must be led by the Spirit of God. Just as the Lord had compassion for all those who are sick, but only did what He saw the Father is doing, we must not do things out of compassion from the fleshy, but in obedience to His Spirit. Importante po yan. Only then will our compassion have the power of redemption. Kasi pag naawa ka, hindi naman kay Lord, it will not bear fruit. Kaya nga, ikaw, mag-invest ka sa tao, pera, okay, mag-invest ka. Ano naging bunga? Kasi hindi kay Lord yun. Accountable ka dyan. Okay? John 12.32 If I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Okay, the key that people will have an encounter, will sense the presence of God while ministering, while worshiping, lift them up. Dahil sabi dyan, if I'm lifted up, I will draw all people. Ngayon, kung ikaw, you're drawing people to yourself, then Christ cannot draw them. Kaya pag that, pag tapos, uy, magaling, pero parang ako ng bless. Okay? Kaya nga, I always, Lord, this is you, ikaw ang bida. Then, the second Important thing. Number one, di ba kanina? Lift him up. It's all about him. And the second, in 2 Timothy 2, 20, 21, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also utensils of wood, earthenware, and some for honorable, and some for menial and ignoble use. Next. So whoever cleanses himself, from what is ignoble and unclean, who separates himself from contact with contaminating and corrupting influences, will then himself be a vessel set apart and useful for honorable and notable purposes, consecrated and profitable to the master, fit and ready for any work. What is that? The degree that you allow the Holy Spirit for your life to be purified the degree that you will receive more authority, anointing, and revelation. If you will not allow the Holy Spirit to purify you, you will not go far to the ministry. That is the key. Lift them up. Second, purify your life. Hindi pwede nagyayabang ka. The reason why I ask God in one of my prayers, Lord, the only time that I will be protected from pride is I will depend, depend on you more. So, deepen my dependency and I'll give it to you. Meaning, He will take away where my confidence is until all confidence is only on Him. Hindi madali yan. Kasi nararanasan ko na yan. Lord, especially sa seminar, nung in-open niya to, sabi ko, Lord, di ko kaya yan. Sabi sa doktor, hindi ako pwede 30 minutes. Mga one hour max. Sabi niya, Grace, remember you told me you want to deepen your dependency. Now, my dear son. So sabi ko, okay. That protects us eh, from pride. 
yung aasa ka lang sa kanya. Imagine, di ba? Ang laki ng gastos dito sa seminar. Pero you, sa kanya lang ako aasa. Bakit? You see, when you're deepening your dependency on Him, that protects you from pride. Because pride is being independent of God. That's the opposite. opposite. Kaya, you deepen your dependency on Lord. Ano? Ano to? Ano to? Ano to? You see? So, the very thing that you will re- you want to last in the ministry and be great and really take hold of what God has taken hold of all of us is, number one, lift them up. Wala nang iba. Lift them up. Okay? You know what? When the, the CRCM is multiplying, hindi nagsisikit sa heart ko eh. Para masabi ko, nakasabi. Hindi yan, oh, yung laki na namin, oh. No, it does not. Alam ni Lord yan. Hindi ko nga iniisi. Ay ko, Lord, ikaw nagbigay yung bala ka dyan. And then, secondly, what? Purify yourself. Let the Holy Spirit purify you. And you will last. And you will reach your destiny. Sabi ko nga, Lord, end. I will end my destiny in victory, in glory, in power, in authority, in what? prosperity, I will fulfill my destiny no matter what happens. Amen po ba? That's it. So, uh, if you have any questions to those who are with us in Zoom and in FB live streaming, please submit them so we can answer it later. With that, we conclude the third session and t- later at 3 o'clock we will start again. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for your message. Give us the, for giving us an, a greater understanding of the gift. Help us, O oh God, to really discover more about all that you have given us, O oh God, that we can exercise it in purity of heart, in humility, love, and grace. Lord, may we not uh, forget that this is all about you and your people. Kaya ang po, Panginoon, tulungan mo kami. We cannot do this, Lord, uh, agad-agad, imperfect. But you will help us, O oh Lord, and we are willing to take risks para long, Lord, matuto kami, ma-enhance yung gift namin. And we, Lord, always remind us, these gifts are for others, not for us. Kaya po, Lord, may continue, Lord, that I ask that you could continue to hide me behind the cross and that ikaw lang po ang mabigyan ng kalwalhatian, papuri at pasasalamat. Ngayon pa lamang, Lord, tinataas po kita, binibigay ko po lahat yan sa'yo, binabalik po dahil ikaw lamang po, sa sa'yo po nagmula ito sa pamamagitan mo. At syempre, Panginoon, sa'yo lamang ibabalik ang lahat ng, ng thanksgiving, glory, praises, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. So, happy lunch and uh, thank you.